to brothers and sisters. Jesus Christ is God's gift to all of humanity. Do I hear an amen? amen? And so I want to share with you on this topic, the gift of God. The gift of God. Gift giving is a huge part of Christmas. I know that many struggle with how overwhelming uh, commercialism can get, especially around these times. Even so, when I look at the biblical accounts of Jesus' birth, it seems to me that our tradition of giving gifts to one another is a part altogether fitting. The story is told of the, this exuberant young man who went into the living room one night while his father was engrossed in television. He raised up the, split, the nerve to ask his father, Daddy, how much do you make in an hour? The father, feeling offended, replied in righteous indignation, That's none of your business. As a child, why would you be asking me such a thing? The father replied, But the son Undeterred, insisted, Daddy, I'm just curious. Please, would you tell me how much you make an hour? The father reluctantly responded, I make $100 an hour. Feeling defeated, the son meekly asked, Can I borrow $50? The father, feeling furious, bellowed, If the only reason, if it was to borrow money, to buy games, get food, at the food court, get some new football shoe. You have another thing coming. Your attitude, your attitude is inexcusable rather. After the way that I ensure that everything you need, you're going to ask me that. The son sheepishly returned to his room, shut the door, and retired for the evening after some time elapsed. The father came down he, and he began to wonder what was going, what was really going on with his son and thought he had been too hard with his son. He then crept in, into his room and tapped him on the shoulder and said, Son, I am sorry. I should not have been so harsh with you. Here is the fifty dollars you requested. The boy then jumped and reached under his pillow and found some crumpled dollars some crumpled dollar bills. The father got more irate, more upset, saying, you already had more money. No, you got the, you, had, you, you didn't even need to ask me for money because you have had enough. I didn't even have enough then, but no, I do, said the son. Daddy, I now have enough hundred dollars. Can I buy an hour of your time? you come home from work? Can you sit with me? Can you play video games with me? Can you play basketball with me? Can you just give me an hour? I have the hundred dollars now. The father uncontrollable, uncontrollable began to, to cry. He repented. He now realized he had bought a lot of gifts but have not given any of his presents. Brothers and sisters, what is the gift of God to you this morning? And how do you, you, you utilize, how do you use the gift that God has given to you? The gift, brothers and sisters, I want to submit to you. The gift of God is that Jesus brought the gift of glory. And that is what we see in verse 9 of the biblical text. Jesus brought the gift of glory. For the angel said, for the angel came and said, the glory of the Lord has shone around, around about them and they were so afraid. Brothers and sisters, interrupting this quiet dark night was the shining presence of angels and the glory of the Lord. The word glory here refers to the evidence of God's majestic presence later associated Even when God 
praise, thunder, and a big cloud, and the sound of a loud trumpet. The people were so afraid that they dared not come near the mountain. When the, when the godly Isaiah saw, saw God through a vision, he cried, then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Oh, somebody had to praise him. Suddenly, he arrived, he realized that he was a sinner. It is always, brothers and sisters, a fearful thing for a sinner to see a manifestation of God and this glory. Perhaps, brothers and sisters, this is what we need. This is what we need this season. We need the glory of God. Can somebody agree with me this morning that we need the glory of God? It is not that we have not enough presence, but we need the presence of Almighty God. Yes, we have given many gifts this Christmas, but can I say to you what we need this Christmas, what we need in this season is the glory of God. I don't know about you, but I don't need stuff. What I need is the glory of Almighty God, the glory of God. Can I say to you, when you encounter God's glory, something will happen to you. When you experience the glory of God, you cannot remain the same. Either you become uncomfortable or you welcome His glory. Can I say to somebody, when you're living certain life, you will become fearful when the glory comes. But when you're living right before God, you will expect His presence, expect His glory. I pray this morning, brothers and sisters, somebody will experience the glory of the Lord. Oh, someone lift your hands and praise Him. Someone lift your hands and praise Him. Hallelujah to Jesus. Oh, glory be to God, somebody. Let me worship him this morning. But I fear, brothers and sisters, that in our culture, in our heathenistic culture, or even in the church nowadays, far too often, brothers and sisters, we have become comfortable. We have pulled God down and made him out to be an old man bent over and tolerating our sins. We think that the only ones he will touch are the worst of the of the worst. Murderers and child molesters and homosexuals and adulterers. But all of us, my brothers and sisters, must understand that we have a responsibility to live in such a way, to facilitate, to accommodate, and to live in God's presence. To live in the glory of Almighty God. Oh, somebody lift their hands and praise in the house. And we have lifted, we have lifted humanity up so that we we mistake, mistakenly think that, that most people are basically good. As a result, we don't understand what the Bible teaches about God's terrible, terrible wrath against sin and the, the great danger that threatens every person outside of Christ. Brothers and sisters, when the glory comes, it will affect us, it will cause something to Oh, 
only did Jesus brought the gift of glory, but Jesus brought the gift of joy. He brings joy, brothers and sisters. Jesus brings joy. Anybody know that? Anybody know that Jesus Christ brings joy? Some of us here all face with some bit and fronted. You don't know if much joy in your life. But Jesus brings joy. When you're serving God, you must be joyful. Something must happen to you, brothers and sisters, to flood your heart with great joy. That's what, they, that what the angels came with. The, the verse in verse 10 says, And the angels said unto them, Fear not, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Oh, hallelujah. A family during the Great Depression was unable to afford anything but the bare necessities. One day the news came that a circus was coming to town. Tickets cost one dollar. The title, the little boy rather, came running home excited and eager to get the money from his dad. The father regretfully told this boy, his boy, that he could not provide him with, with that much more, more that much money, brothers and sisters, but if he, if he went out and worked on, on, on some job, he might make enough to purchase a ticket on his own. The dad promised to, to match what the boy could earn. The boy worked uh, so hard and, and, and for a few days before the circus came, brothers and sisters, if the circus came to town, they found that he had just enough money including his dad's contribution. He took the money, ran off to town, buy his tickets, hallelujah, to the circus. The day of the circus came, he grabbed his ticket and rushed to, to the main street, where he stood on the curb as the circus parade went by. He was thrilled as he watched the clowns and the, and the elephants and all of the performers. A clown came dancing over to him, and the boy put his ticket in, his, in, the, in the clown's in the clown's hand. He eagerly watched as uh, the rest of the parade went by. After the parade, the boy rushed home and told his father that he had been uh, he had been to the circus. You know how much fun it was. The father, surprised that the boy was home and ready, asked him to describe the circus. The boy, uh, the boy told him uh, of the parade and all the parade went he gave his ticket to the clown. The father suddenly took his son in his arms and said, Son, you didn't see the circus. All you saw was the parade. The boy, brothers and sisters, reminds me of many Christians at Christmas time. They get caught up with the curls and the trees and the light and the gifts given. They think that they are, that they are experiencing what Christmas is all about. Really, all they're doing is seeing the parade and missing the main event. Brothers and sisters, can I say to us, uh, the true joy of Christmas is found in Jesus. The true joy of Christmas is found not in stuff, but in Jesus. True joy is not found in materialism, but in Jesus. True joy is not found in your, in, in, in our kind of thing. But in Jesus, true joy is not found in even academics. But in Jesus, true joy, brothers and sisters, is found in Jesus. Amen. True joy is not found in titles and accolades and power and status. True joy is found in Jesus. True joy is not found in the prevailing practices of the world. Yes, I know the boy on the corner can say that he can go out some dance and go out some place and have some nice time, but they are not experiencing true joy. True joy is only found in the man Jesus Christ. Oh, somebody give him praise in the house. True joy is found in the Savior. The news about the Savior brings great joy because it's good news for sinners and it's great news for believers. And so that is why we can praise our God because we have a joy that this world can't give. We have a joy that materialism can't give. 
We have a joy that money can't give us. We have a joy that luxury can't give us. We have a joy that deep down inside of our hearts and the devil can't take it away. We have a joy that is anchored in God. We have a joy, church, that is anchored in Jesus Christ. Oh, somebody had a praise in the house. Yes, sir. brothers and sisters, we are in a time where people have become susceptible to depression and isolation. We need joy. Anybody need some joy in your life? You're going through so much. Hallelujah. 2020 has been a hard blow for some of us. Many have lost jobs. Many have lost employment. Sickness and disease is upon the land. Oh God, somebody help me in the house. And you don't know what's happening in your life right now. Some people right now, sister Cohen, oh God Almighty, they don't know where the next meal is coming from. Because this year has been so bad. Because this year has been so bad. You need a good joy in your life. You need some joy in your life. And I say to you today that this joy is found in Jesus, not in anything else. This word Give you this joy, this joy is found in Jesus. Oh, somebody had praise in the house. Oh, God Almighty. People have become wayward and lost. People have lost their moral compass. People have become callous and reckless. People are frustrated by life. Yes, yeah, so 
means anointed. The word Christ means anointed. That means that he's conqueror. He's the king of kings. And he's the lord of lords. Means that no 